First of all, thank everybody for coming out. Thank you all for coming out. <clears throat> I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support for this initiative. I think uh, every single South African that is stood here today and all of those that are supporting the movement from South Africa and, and overseas, we've got 18 countries that are standing with us in solidarity. I think we all understand one thing that we've been granted this golden opportunity to bring about some real change. And uh, it wasn't so long ago, I think all of us, including myself, felt completely, completely hopeless. I was at a stage where I couldn't get out of bed. I was in bed for two weeks and I, I couldn't move out of bed. I was so disheartened, you know. We we worked so hard to build, uh, I'm staying to get into this place that can do so much good and to create social cohesion and bring our country together. And then it's like somebody just pulled the rug from underneath us with this whole COVID thing. And everywhere I looked, there was just devastation. There was just pain and devastation and loss. And it's a lot to deal with, you know. We sit with these feelings and we think to ourselves, there's no way forward. And then Move One Million came about. <laughs> and it inspired a nation. Not just a nation, but it inspired the world. Because um, we have an opportunity now to be able to change the status quo. Where we felt like there was no hope and like we were fighting this, this monster that was so big. We realized that the real strength, the real unity, the real giant is actually the people. The, res the results in our country. So many good people with the best intentions. People that love and care for one another. People that are reaching outside of themselves on a daily basis to go the extra mile, to put food in the stomachs of those that can't feed themselves. To put clothes on the back of those that can't put clothes on the back of themselves. To educate those that can't educate themselves. Yeah. That's our South Africa. That's the country that we're fighting for. And uh, we can never again be ever held to ransom by an entity that thinks that it is bigger and more important than the people of South Africa and then our state, the Republic of South Africa. And this is our golden opportunity with this momentum that we've gotten and the support that we have. This is our golden opportunity to push against the system. And if we continue to push against the system and we continue to amass our numbers, the system will break. It will break. All we have to do is go back in history and see what happens when the numbers start together. Because it's in the numbers that change comes. Not through social media, not through sitting on our phones and complaining, yeah. not through whining, not through hate. That stuff comes from people being proactive, willing to participate, to get stuck in, on the ground. And where there is light, there can be no darkness. We must be that light. Yeah. We must be accountable. We cannot just hold others to account. South Africans, if each and every one of us, must be held accountable. If we want the change, we must start with ourselves and we must bring the change. We must be willing to step outside of our comfort zones and help those that cannot help themselves so we can build trust, so we can build unity. Because it's only through a united South Africa that change is ever going to happen, real substantial change. The reality is that we're still living very much in apartheid states. We have never come together. Whatever happened in the past regime has been left to decay and rot in this current regime. And we can no longer do that. We have the most beautiful, complex, diverse society in the world. It's so unique in its nature. And there are so many people that are in the trenches as we speak right now that are trying to just help and support. That is our leadership. That is the leaders that we need. Let's raise them up. Yeah. Let's throw as much light on them as we can and let's support them in their efforts. The country is full of leaders. Not the leaders you see on TV. Not our sportsmen that remain quiet now. Mm. Not our corporates that remain mum. You know, influences that are not saying a word during this tragic time, not those people, the people that are unsung heroes, the people that are not seen. That's where we need to focus. So I encourage everybody to please intensify your efforts of random acts of kindness. Find NGOs, MPOs, people that are doing good work in your communities and support their efforts. Step outside of your comfort zones and go into communities that you don't normally go into. Don't be afraid. Don't live in fear. All right? They are beautiful people all around us but we must step outside of this bubble that we live in we have to it's the only way i was talking to somebody the other day i was reminded people will go overseas they'll go to thailand they'll go to some of the most dangerous places in thailand and walk through their their poorer communities but they won't do it here in our own country if we're not prepared to do that in our own country then we've got no chance we have got to put our hate aside we have got to put our differences aside we've got to put this melanin aside because this is not the thing that will define us. Yeah. What will define us is how far we are willing to go. 
But what we'll define us is how we stand together and push against the challenges that we have. And we know what the challenges are. A corrupt and broken government. It must be challenged. It must be challenged. We've got the ability now, through this Concord ruling from Chief Justice Mahweng Mahweng, that gives us the ability to elect our leadership directly. No more having to, direct, uh, to elect a party. We elect our own leaders. We must make sure we are a part of that process. We have to make sure that that process is transparent, that people are brought to account, and that we ourselves are accountable. Yeah. We have to be involved in every process, every step of the way. And in the next 20 months, we have an opportunity to bring real change, long-term sustainable change. And if we think it's just going to happen in 20 months, we're wrong. We've got the fight of our lives in South Africa. For the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to have to build our country from grassroots level, from the bottom. We're going to have to get involved with people at bottom level and help us, help everybody to build, to invest, to invest in our children, to invest in education systems, to invest in feeding schemes, sustainability projects. And if we do that and we find a government that actually cares about the people, that was elected by the people, we can make a go of this, a real go of this. Yeah, yeah. And we can live in the most beautiful country in the world and share in each other's diversity and share in each other's culture, amazing culture. Uplift each other, protect each other, care for one another. That is the South Africa that I want to live in. That's, just, that's a story I want to be a part of. I don't want to be a part of the hate. I don't want to be a part of the division. I don't want to be a part of the narcissism. It's not about that. I want to find peace. I want to be peace in my heart. I want what I want. I want more than anything. I want to be happy. And I've never been so happy in my life as when I start to serve. I can tell you right now, if you want to be happy, truly happy, you're not going to find it in fat bank accounts and smart cars. You're going to find it in serving those that need help. That's where you're going to find happiness. If you can change one person's life, you have lived the most richest life. You can die a happy man or woman. And I'm calling on every South African, no matter your race, your creed, your sexual orientation, I don't care. Stand with me. Stand. Stand together. Because only together can we make this country what it needs to be. Alright? But we must stand. If we are not going to be part of this process, then we are part of the problem. We have to be a part of this process. We have to do it in the lights. Love, respect, peace. Those are our weapons. Those are the tools we use. You can't beat hate with hate. Only love can do that. Yes, you said that. I just want to say something. We've got We've got the 5th of September, that's the start for us, it's the beginning, okay? The 5th of September is not a once-off event, it is the push button, it's the go. Alright, and in the next 20 months, in the next 10 months, we need to amass and to mobilize every single South African. We need to build. We start with a million, then we get two, then we get three, and then we move them all. Because once we do that, nothing can stop this machinery once it's going. So for the next 20 months, I want you to commit to me like I'm prepared to commit to you, and let's get this thing done, alright? Let's get involved in our communities. Let's get involved in cool projects. Let's get involved in awareness campaigns. And let's keep on doubling and tripling our numbers until the ground starts to shake beneath our feet. But that's what we need. We need to have so much awareness. We need to have so much pressure that the roof shakes, that the ground shakes beneath our feet, that the windows vibrate. I've been in those. I know what they feel like. I want to be part of that experience again. And this time I want to do it unified. Okay. So please, if you're willing to commit, put your hand up. Yeah. Well done, South Africa. Well done, well done, well done, well done.